I've been using the Peak Design Everyday Backpack Zip 20 liters for about 2 months and I love it. In this video I'll explain why I chose this bag as someone who doesn't carry a lot of camera gear. If you need to carry a lot of camera gear I don't think you should keep watching this video because this backpack is not for you. Before purchasing the Peak Design Zip 20 liters I considered other camera backpacks such as the Peter McKinnon Everyday, the Low Pro Fast Pack and many others. But I went with the Peak Design Zip 20 liters for a couple of reasons. The first reason is size and weight. The Peak Design Zip 20 liter backpack weighs only about 1.5 kilograms and is not too large for a 20 liter pack. I can't emphasize how important it is to me because I don't carry a lot of camera gear. I want my camera backpack to be as light as possible while also not appearing too bulky when I wear it. I am 173 centimeters tall and this backpack fits me perfectly. The next reason is design. It's very simple and clean with fantastic build quality. It has three handles, one on top and two on the sides. When you don't want to wear the backpack on your back, you can use these handles to transport the bag. It has five waterproof zippers in total, two for the top compartment, one on each side for side access, and another one for the laptop compartment. And the laptop compartment can fit a 16 inch laptop with a 13 inch tablet, which not many camera bags of this size can. It also has two large water bottle pockets that can be used to transport a tripod or an umbrella. These pockets are expandable with mesh and magnetically closed when not in use. I don't carry my tripod very often but having two water bottle pockets is extremely useful because you can carry many bulky items in there such as an umbrella, light stand or even a spare jacket. I'm not going to buy another camera backpack unless it has two water bottle pockets. It's such a simple feature but unfortunately many camera backpacks don't have it. Another cool design feature I'd like to highlight is that this backpack stands on its own when placed on the ground, unless you only have a laptop inside, in which case it will fall over. I don't really think the standard everyday backpack with the Maglite system can do that. Anyhow, let's move on to capacity and what you can fit inside. The capacity is 20 liters, but there is also a 15 liter version available. I chose the 20 liter version because I intend to purchase a 16 inch laptop soon, whereas the 15 liter version will only fit a 13 inch laptop. Furthermore, I intend to use this bag as my minimal travel bag and having extra space for clothing is always useful. This backpack includes two flex fold dividers to help you organize your gear. I put the dividers on my backpack upside down because I want more space in the top compartment. I can easily fit all of my gear inside, which isn't all that much. I can fit my Sony a7 IV with a 20mm f1.8 attached, as well as my Sony ZV-E10 with a 35mm f1.8 attached, with room to spare on the other side for anything else. This backpack will easily fit two full frame mirrorless cameras with two compact zoom lenses such as a traditional 24 to 70 f2.8 or one full frame mirrorless camera with like two to three lenses and a compact drone setup. There are also compact side pockets for small accessories which I usually keep my extra batteries, airpods, gray card and cables in. Even with all of this inside I still have plenty of space in the top compartment for anything that's not camera gear. In addition if I need to carry more camera gear, I can buy an extra divider to better organize the bag. So right now I'm recording with the iPhone and sorry for the bad audio quality. Anyhow, I've stuffed the bag to the brim. Let me show you all the things I have inside. So first I have a water bottle on one side and on the other side I have a travel tripod. Okay, now let's take out the laptop. I have a 13 inch MacBook Pro and then I have some cables and I also have a compact uh, charger. Now in the top compartment, I have some clothes. I have a jacket, some shorts, uh, three t-shirts, actually four t-shirts. And that's pretty much it. Now everything here is empty. There's also a pocket in here. And here I usually store a passport, maybe airports. And now I have some money in here. Now let's see what I have on the right side axis. Here it's pretty much empty. Actually, I have a gray card and cleaning tissue. Then I have my Sony a7 IV with a 20 millimeters f1.8. Fits nicely in here. And then I also have my Sony ZV-E10 with a 35 millimeters f1.8. That's pretty much all of my camera gear at the moment. And this is how it looks like. Now let's flip the bag over for the other side access. And on the other side, I have my microphone of choice, the Rode VideoMic 
to go and then this is a thingamajiga to clean the camera I have my GoPro stuff, GoPro mode, GoPro 11 and GoPro nits and bits and this is how it looks like and then here on these small pockets on the side I have my AirPods I also have a spare battery for the Sony A7 IV and then here I have my power bank of choice, the Nightcore 10,000K. Like I said, I have extra space in here, as you can see, to put an extra divider in case if I want to put more camera gear. But usually this space in here for camera gear is more than enough for me. I carry my camera stuff in here and then clothes, food, anything else really in this top section. As you can see, you can't really fit a lot of gear inside and this bag isn't as space efficient as bags that open completely from the back, such as the Peter McKenna Nomatic. That's fine with me because of the design, weight and ease of access. I used to despise side access bags, but if you don't carry a lot of camera gear, I think it's the best option because you can quickly access your gear without having to put the bag on the ground. Of course, there are drawbacks to using the side access, such as not being able to see all of your gear at a glance, having to remember which side you put your camera on, taking a long time to properly organize the dividers for your gear, and opening the side access when you have a water bottle or a tripod on the side. I'd like to have both side and complete back access, however, because I don't carry a lot of camera gear, I'm totally fine with the side access. But if you're thinking about buying this bag right now, consider how much gear you'll be carrying and whether side access will be an advantage or disadvantage for you. Before we get to the comfort, I'd like to mention another reason why I chose this bag, modularity. I have the Peak Design Everyday Sling 3 liters and I know for a fact that you can use the external carry straps to attach it to the zip backpack. That way, if I need to, I can expand my storage. It's not perfect, but I've tested it and it works just fine. The main thing I was concerned about before purchasing this bag was its comfort. I had the Peak Design Sling 10 liters and had to sell it because it was so uncomfortable. However, after about two months of using the backpack zip, I can say with certainty that this bag is extremely comfortable to wear. I traveled and hiked with this backpack and never had a single issue when it comes to comfort. The straps are very nice and soft and the included chest strap comes in handy if you load the bag to the brim. Peak Design also sells a waist strap that can be used to help with weight distribution. How just because this bag is comfortable for me doesn't mean it will be comfortable for you. Perhaps you have more gear than I do or your body shape is different. Backpack comfort is a very personal thing so I recommend going to the local store, trying this bag with gear inside and see whether it's comfortable for you or not. So is the Peak Design every the backpack zip 20 liters the perfect camera bag? No, the perfect camera bag does not exist, but this backpack is exactly what I need to carry my small amount of gear comfortably. Please let me know down below if you have any questions or comments about the Peak Design Zip 20 liters and I guess I'll see you again soon.